A controversy over uniformed men in Washington's nightclubs had not died down as both a general and a senator claimed their sons, both army privates, had been turned away and were told to go and change into civilian clothes before being admitted. Not to say there weren't plenty of other organized activities for soldiers and sailors. The local newspapers listed dozens of locations of service clubs and USO clubs in Washington at the Soldiers, Sailors, and Mariners Club on L Street in the nation's capital and listed men found a library, writing desks, tables, tennis pool, radios, pianos, canteen showers. The club was open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. At many clubs, single, young, single women put up Christmas trees and if a homesick soldier or sailor had trouble finding a room in Washington, they could go to the hospitality committee in the district building for help. Both Catholic and Jewish groups operated clubs for young servicemen as well. Over at the Bureau of Printing and Engraving, the Women's Battalion was sponsoring a dance. There were also dances at the YMCA, sightseeing tours of the area, teas, and lectures. There were also plenty of activities for colored servicemen in Washington, including an open house at the Phyllis Wheatley YMCA, religious services at various institutions, lodging at the YMCA in Anacosta, and dances. The Washington Evening Star referred to the minority clubs as for colored, while the Washington Post referred to them as for Negro. Many political leaders, including no less a luminary than Eleanor Roosevelt, lobbied for greater civil rights for blacks. But those gains were to come much later. For now, Washington was still a part of the South a region where segregationist Jim Crow laws would continue to hold sway for the time being. And we'll pause there.